There's a there's a saying, teach a man to fish or fish for a man. Teach a man to fish. Teach someone how to microneedle and they will have thick skin forever. Okay, we're just gonna call it that. All right, I was so excited to see Dr. Ab's video on microneedling and derma rolling because it was a completely unsponsored video. And I feel like since running my business for 11 years, I've been shouting from the rooftops about how amazing microneedling is and how it has changed my life and my skin. And it has been by far the best thing I've ever done for my skin. And you guys know, I had this YouTube channel many, many years ago before I started my business. Unfortunately, because we're a small business, Business, we don't have the budget to pay, you know, very expensive influencers or creators to talk about microneedling. So I'm so glad Dr. Abs did. And I will be responding from the point of view of a brand founder who has a microneedling business. By the way, this is my daughter's uh, iPad. To show you and you really can get clinical level, clinic level results at home by spending around kind of $10 or so. The medical industry, the cosmetic medical industry will want you to believe that it's not possible so that you'll then pay extortion amounts in a clinic. But I'd rather tell you the truth. I'll be showing you the protocol, the scientific papers to prove the efficacy, uh, the reason it works, the technique, what to put on your skin after and the risks of doing it as well. Now, the basic premise of this is to understand that a derma roller when used correctly can genuinely be the strongest home anti-aging device out there, which you can do yourself. I know some of you won't believe me because it's quite cheap, right? But that's the industry's marketing, making you think that the biggest results come from the biggest prices. That's not true. And you know, I'll put the scientific papers quote on screen for you to see. You know, how can it be true? Your cells don't respond to how much money you, sp you spend. They respond to biological and chemical and physical processes, regardless of whether you paid one pound. So how I found out about microneedling is actually very accidental. Um, I've had acne scars and acne my entire life and, you know, did not have money to treat acne scarring, whatever. Like, unfortunately, in the United States, acne scarring is not covered by health insurance, which is a whole nother thing. Like acne is, but not the scarring, right? So that is like, you know, to treat that is like thousands upon thousands of dollars. So I basically saved up all my money to do and waited for my skin to heal from all the acne to treat my acne scars. I went to actually a family friend, um, plastic surgeon and he was like i'm not going to take your money you're not a good candidate for a laser do this thing it's called a derma roller derma roll it put a vitamin c serum on top and when he told me that i was like you are crazy i will not do this like what do you think i am right and i was like i'm not gonna stick needles in my face but then i started on my youtube channel because i've been making youtube videos like since the dinosaur age about acne and acne scarring i got a lot of messages that microneedling would help my skin so i tried that and before i knew it People on the internet, they asked me what I did for my acne scars. Like, I didn't think anything of it. And then my mom was saying, like, your skin is glowing. And I got a tiger mom. So, you know, she doesn't sugarcoat things, right? And she told me my skin was great. And people around me were telling me my skin was great. So it truly, truly works. And it was so accidental how I found out about it. And so ever since then, I've created this business, Banish, because you guys wanted something. And I really wanted to spread the message of how amazing microneedling is. A pound or a million pounds. There's no money in derma rollers compared to other things because the patent for them is freely usable by anyone. So I had a friend who um, was in the machine device sales for plastic surgeons, dermatologists to sell them these laser machines, okay? And these machines are like half a million dollars, $250,000. And he would say that they would offer them to derms as a lease and you know offer them like a mortgage payment right like three four five six seven grand a month to lease this very expensive equipment so because they were leasing them they were really pressured to sell packages of laser treatments so he was saying that that's why a lot of these professionals push laser treatments because they buy these expensive machines. So there's a whole nother business behind it. But yes, honestly, your skin, it doesn't like, it's not gonna react to money, right? It's gonna react to what works and the science behind it. The manufacturers tell you that you need something expensive instead because they can make more money out of that. So here we go. First thing you'll need, obviously, is a derma roller. You can pick one of these up on Amazon for around $10 or 10 pounds, depending on where you are in the world. Now, as a generalization, one millimeter is the depth that's been studied in this context. 
doesn't mean that every single one of you should start with that, but I can't give personalized advice to each of you from a single video. So you guys know for me, when I first started my business, I actually started selling Derma rollers and they're like these kind of rollers here. Now, personally, like I'm not gonna hate on Derma rollers and say they're bad. Like obviously if this is what you have, use what you have. Personally for me, I felt like Derma rollers create, had a risk of tram track scarring. So from selling these Derma rollers, I had customers would send me photos of them pushing way too hard. They would uh, create tram track scarring and I wanted to create basically Basically the safest most effective device possible plus if you guys know I still suffer with acne even at almost 36 years old the acne is still acne -ing. so I didn't want to have someone like roll over active acne and instead I felt like a stamper device would be a lot safer so this is the banisher 3.0 so I felt like a stamper device where you could stamp around the active acne would be a lot safer too when I see patients in person, I assess their skin and choose the depth based on that. Sometimes I, I might actually start with just 0.2 mil. Other times I might go straight to one mil. Um, if you choose too low a depth, then it doesn't really do anything in terms of causing responses in the skin. Our banishers are a 0.5 a millimeter depth. And I did a lot of research into what depth I wanted to make my devices. So the reason why I chose 0.5 is because it was the best length for collagen production. And in the plastic and reconstructive surgery of April 2008, they did a study of patients using a two millimeter roller and patients doing a 0.5 millimeter roller. And they found that the 0.5 millimeter group had the best results in the shortest amount of time um, versus the two millimeters. So that's why I chose a 0.5 millimeter. And then they actually did a study where they found that new collagen only is produced at 0.5 to 0.6 millimeters. So a lot of people think the longer the needle, the better it is for your skin. And it's not the case because your skin is only like a millimeter thick. I mean, it's dependent on where it is, but generally that's where it is. So if you go past a millimeter, you are risking going into the fat in your face and you know, I don't want fat on my stomach, but I do want it on my face because it creates that like baby youthful skin. So you don't need to go longer. Longer in this case is not always better. Skin. Uh, some patients of mine over the years have said, oh, I'll start small and work up. Well, if you start low, you're not actually working anything at that point. There are structures in the skin that lie in particular depths and you either target them or you don't. If you get close, but not quite there, then there's still zero effect. It doesn't work like a dial where you, you gradually turn it up to switch that's either pressed or not pressed. If you want to work up in terms of tolerating the needles and accept the lack of effect until you get the right depth, then that's fine. Now, for example, uh, if someone wants me to target a particular cell type, let's say 0.75 mil deep, and they say they want me to start at 0.2 for comfort, then they're wasting their time because the cell types in question aren't at 0.2 depth, are they? So nothing's gonna happen if you're in the wrong depth. Equally, I know some of you will be thinking, I'm gonna go even deeper and do 1.5 or two or 2.5 or three mil. Don't do this, trust me. There are indications for going beyond one mil and you guys doing your, this yourselves at home is not one of them. You can actually cause your skin to get worse if you do that. For example, you know, a famous paper oust 2008 showed that even if you needle deeper, you don't produce collagen any deeper than around say half a mil anyway. Think about it, you'll have fat if you go deeper. Yep, that's exactly what I was saying. I think we referenced the same research paper. I'm gonna turn on the subtitles. Needling the fat doesn't make it turn into collagen, does it? It's still gonna be fat afterwards, so calm down. I really wonder though, if I use a huge ass roller on my stomach, will it melt the, the fat in my stomach? Like I'm down for melting the fat in like different areas. Like maybe they'll start doing radio frequency Morpheus um, in like different body parts. That'd be cool. Down. And don't be stupid by going to ridiculous depths. There's such a thing as too shallow and also too deep. Uh, more frequent needling doesn't mean better either. You know, when you go into the skin and cause a cascade of events to occur. Right, so people think, like they always ask how often should you use the banisher? I say use it um, once every other week and then work your way up to once per week, but don't you don't need to go more than once per week. And I think of it as the same thing as like lifting at the gym. You guys know I'm a fitness instructor, fitness freak, whatever. 
you know, you got to alternate your upper body days and your lower body days and all that. You need time for that collagen to recover in your skin and to grow back. Doing it again before that cascade has had a chance to heal and grow is detrimental to you. You don't go to the gym every four hours, do you, right? You, you cause the damage that you need, then you recover, then you grow, and then you hit the gym again once you've grown and are able to take the same process again. Needling is the same, so stick to just once. So I love this gym analogy, and I don't know if Dr. Abs ever seen any of my videos because that was always the analogy I use. Um, because you guys know, like I'm very muscular, I'm you know really into fitness. But for me, fitness and building muscle is something that happens over like a decade of consistent working out, consistent training, consistent, you know, going to the gym. It's not something where you go to the gym one time or even for one month or even three months and you see like you're jacked like this, right? Like, like <laughs> you have to be going for many, many years before really seeing a result. So the same thing is with microneedling. You have to be doing it consistently. And by doing it consistently, you're going to have like just thicker skin, literally, right? Just like how now, even because I've been working out for so many years, for decades, if I miss a month of working out, I still look fit because the muscles are still there, right? And this is also why I say like, I've been microneedling around the sides of my face for over 12 years. And you can see I don't have crow's feet. And I swear it's because I've just been doing that for so, so long. So a byproduct was this. Now, what I'm trying to do now is microneedle. Like I never microneedled my nasal labial folds because I didn't have acne scars there. But I'm like, I kind of wish I did because then I would plump this up. So now I'm like kind of working all over the face now. Once per week for this protocol, no more. I promise you, once a week is enough, and I'm going to show you the scientific paper on screen now, which proved this. It's a very famous paper by uh, Zyta 2014. Might have butchered the name, sorry. Uh, it showed that the protocol of once a week at one millimeter with a particular product afterwards increased the th thickness of the skin by multiple times what it was before. Uh, they did four weeks in the study, but I've regularly done six weeks in a row for patients, and it's been fantastic. Yeah, and that's not a coincidence. However, it does need careful technique, uh, careful product selection, and as I've already said, not being stupid with depth and frequency. Um, I, I really can't emphasize not going overboard with depth and frequency enough, by the way. So so the thing about this industry, especially in beauty and aesthetics, I, and like I feel like fitness and weight loss is similar, is that people just want to see results like this. Like people do not want to put in the work. They want to take a pill or they want to do a treatment, which they see results overnight. And this is why I truly believe why fillers and Botox is so popular because you get it injected, you see the results right away. Um, that's why I believe that the vampire facial was so popular because people saw like the blood on the face, even though it had nothing to do with actually helping your skin. And also just in this industry, like people want to get a BBL, people want to get a tummy tuck, people want to get a breast augmentation. But you know, do they want to do the work of trying to lose weight or all that, like even Ozempic, right? Like people just want to take a pill and they want to see results right away. But I want to tell you like anything worth doing, you have to be consistent. And you know, there there is no such thing as like improving your skin overnight or building collagen in your skin overnight. Like it's, it's years and years of consistency consistency with anything you do. Don't do it. There's there's no benefit. Um, now, how about the technique? Well, I'll show you a video of my derma roller here. Um, it was about eight pounds from Amazon. Titanium needles. Um, get a new one every two months or so, which equates to eight uses because the needles can blunt over time. Now, you just take it like this and simply roll it everywhere like this. I disagree a little bit on this technique because um, I do think this is fine if you're kind of well rehearsed with derma rolling if you don't have any active acne, all that stuff. But what I have found is when I kind of do that technique of using a derma roller, really pushing it in, I feel like I can't really target the areas that I want to treat. Also, the needles on a roller compared to the Banisher 3.0 are much thicker. So the Banisher 3.0 is has the finest needles out there in the market because for me, I really wanted to create a product that would create the least amount of trauma, at least amount of invasion of trauma to the skin. Yeah, you're still going into the skin deep enough to simulate the collagen production, but you're not going to risk any further scarring or tram track scarring. You guys know, for me, I am literally the girl that scars everything. Like I get a paper cut, I will scar. So I have had a little bit of scarring by using a derma roller, 
And that was just me pressing too hard. And I felt like I wanted to create something that was foolproof, right? So yes, derma rollers, microneedling works amazing. But, you know, just be careful in terms of the technique, especially if you're very prone to scarring. Um, your non-rolling hand needs to be stretching the skin so the needles can penetrate easily. Uh, the more stretched the skin is, the more accurate your penetration of uh, your, more, more accurate your penetration depth of the needles is. If your skin is loose, then you won't be penetrating. You'll just be pushing the skin around, right? Um, it doesn't matter which direction you go either because the skin has no idea where the needles come from, obviously. Um, don't hold it like this and put too much force. Yeah, so for me, how I uh, derma roll, for example, is I will press it and then I'll lift it up and then rotate, press it, lift it up, rotate, press it, lift it up, right? So it's like you're just rotating it, especially if you're targeting a certain area. And uh, like what I usually what happens to me, and this is what my product was made for, was people who develop a, a scar right after they get a pimple, me scar city girl okay so um, i would get a scar like pretend that's a pimple scar right so i would just really want to target that area whereas that derma roller especially if you have active acne like don't derma roller active acne right so it's a little bit harder to target force in it um just keeping it within your fingers like a paintbrush you're doing strokes with is enough you don't get more of a result from doing it with more force <laughs> so <laughs> calm down when it comes to the eyes, uh, one millimeter is going to be too much for the vast majority of people. So keep the penetration depth down. Uh, use another roller that's maybe 0.25 millimeters roughly, and then simply pull the skin down so it's stretched. And then use a semicircle motion like this, where you're again using the roller like a paintbrush. Um, now, how long do you do this for? So personally for me, I would not use a roller under the eyes. Also just I, I would also not pull the skin on the eyes. And personally, I do not microneedle under my eyes. And that is something I will be exploring, especially getting closer to 40 nowadays. But just under the eye area, you should just be really careful. So what I do is I microneedle right, like you feel the fat here. That's where I stop. I don't go cl that close, okay? Because my skin is really thin here. I have really big bags under my eyes. So I just stop, like not right here, but stop right here at the top of the cheekbone. If you have the time, you can do a good like five to 10 minutes and that's absolutely fine. If you get to a point um, where you're quite red. I microneedle probably only for five minutes and what I'll, what I'll actually do is I'll just throw on TikTok and I'll just be scrolling and microneedling. It, it's a blast. I usually do it before bed, uh, maybe like before I brush my teeth, after I brush my teeth. Red, long before that, when it's your first time, then just stop when you go red, okay? Eventually you'll get to a point where it takes longer and longer to go red. At that point, just keep to five to 10 minutes. If you bleed, you, you don't need to go much further, to be honest. The goal isn't to draw lo loads of blood. It's simply to go a bit red. Um, when you first do this, it'll be very sensitive, but you'll notice that each week it becomes more and more comfortable because your skin is gonna get thicker and thicker each time. Now, why does this work? because it's like the so i have a really thick skin like literally like inside i have really thick skin because i've been on social media for a million years i also have two of the world's most tiger of the tiger parents who have said everything to me um but i also microneedle so i i just have thick skin damage you cause your muscles in the gym right they have tiny tears but in such a small scale that the body can easily adapt itself to them if you cause huge amounts of damage to the muscle, then you just become weaker. The principles behind what we're doing here is the same. We're causing damage on such a small scale that it acts as stimulation. Yeah, so you don't wanna be like lifting, like lifting too heavy, otherwise you're gonna break your back or you know injure yourself, right? So you, you wanna start just like a little bit more. So very similar to that. You don't wanna be doing very intense things. <laughs> skin to grow. Now, what do you apply to the skin after a needle? Well, you don't technically have to use anything because it's the mechanical stimulation that's important. A paper in 2014, I think, showed someone getting a granuloma, I think, uh, after using a vitamin C product post-needling. Now, I think there's criticisms of the conclusion people get from this paper. Okay, so you guys know that I have read the study. Um, it's actually only four pages, but it was not because it was vitamin C causing granuloma. It was that particular brand and that particular batch of that vitamin C serum that was used because the patients who developed the granulomas had a positive uh, patch test reaction to that. 
So I personally believe vitamin C is the best ingredient to use after microneedling. That's what the plastic surgeon actually told me before I started my business. And I have not found anything better than that. Vitamin C just works for me so, so well. It brightens my skin. If, yeah, if you're scar city, it will just remove the coloration, the hyperpigmentation of that scar. And again, I have you know, I don't call it olive, but I don't have a light like brown undertones, right? So vitamin C really helps like brighten and lighten the skin and build collagen. And the, the vitamin C that Banish uses is an l acid. And there's a lot of uh, research behind l acid, especially one that is fresh, non-oxidized, that really speeds up the acceleration, the production of collagen in the skin and also inhibits the like the dark spots in your skin. But that's for another day. My personal opinion is that if we have the punctures in the skin now and they're going to last probably around 12 minutes, uh, then why not uh, take advantage of that? You know, that's that's what happened in this 2014 study. They used a product uh, that... So what I do and how I microneedle is I basically divide my face into fours and I will just micro microneedle like this section first right this section first and then i apply the vitamin c serum then i move on i clean this then i move on and use like sometimes i'll use another head and then i'll microneedle this section and then put on vitamin c and then do it right so i divide my face into sections so the great thing with the banishers you can really target certain areas so I always focus on the nasal labial folds and the sides of my face. Um, now I'm trying to do the forehead, but usually I won't do the forehead. I won't do the cheeks. I only do like what I want to do and put vitamin C serum right on top of it. But I suggest one section first, then the serum on top. Okay. And then I do not recommend micro infusion devices. Why? Because that serum with that needle is going to kind of compromise the needle going into the skin. It's like a lubricant for the needle, but you don't really need that. Right. And also I like doing in sections so you don't contaminate the serum with other parts of the face. If you have micro infusion devices and you do go over active acne, you could be, you know, spreading it. Sadly isn't on sale anymore as far as I'm aware. Uh, however, I usually prescribe for my patients their skincare anyway, so I just suggest that they just use their standard tretinoin or differin or, you know, a way to get a lot of vitamin A into the skin. Alternatively, something with good levels of, of say, niacinamide would be fantastic too. The next time I do it, I'll probably mix my differin with niacinamide powder from The Ordinary. So I have good amounts of both vitamin A and B3 together. Now, when I treat my patients uh, in London here for needling, I only ever do it once. Why is that when every clinic in the world sells microneedling packages of six or 10 or 12 sessions or something? Because they use pneumatic pens that puncture the skin thousands of times, which I'm against. There's risks of over needling there, which you simply can't get from a roller. The industry wants you to believe that that's the best device out there. There's pneumatic pens and how convenient is it that they can simultaneously make thousands selling those devices at the same time? So uh, Banish is my, uh, manufactured by the same uh, manufacturer that Dr. Penn is and all the professional devices are used. And they kind of gave me an option to create a vibrating device where the basically the Dr. Pennant goes down into the skin. I personally did not think it was necessary. I felt like it was going to cause more injury. I felt like we just need to create tiny little micro channels in the skin. Why are we having a vibration thing? Why are we having, you know, something just jut up and down? But it is kind of a cool like, wow, like, that's so cool, you know, like, and you can add another few hundred dollars to the device by, you know, something like that. And also Banish's needles are the thinnest out there. So they're even thinner than a doctor pen. They're even thinner than any derma roller out there, which is also why it's important that um, you do replace it frequently because it's not going to be as long lasting. But you know, for me, for my canaling device, I don't, I don't, I don't care if it lasts long. I just don't want it to scar my face. And that is why we do have the thinnest needles out there on the market. Please scam, in my opinion. The evidence is out there, as I've already shown you, that even just a roller can multiply the skin thickness several fold. What extra benefit is there in using a pneumatic pen beyond making money for the industry? Uh, I treat my patients once only, as I said, because... When I do it for them once, I figure out the best way to needle for that individual patient's skin. They watch me the entire time as I'm doing it, and then they are armed with the knowledge to provide their own needling for the rest of their lives for free. So my needling price is very high, um, I won't lie, but I'm massively cheaper than everywhere else because I only do it once, 
and the patient then has decades of treatment. So Dr. Pet, uh, Dr. Pet, Dr. Abs, I'm going to be sending you an email and sending you some products. Uh, you can try the banisher and I would love to, you know, see how you like using it. And also, you know, that's why I also created the banisher because I do think with a derma roller, there are some risks. Again, with the tram track scarring, with not knowing how hard to push, with going over active acne. So I wanted to create a foolproof device that was easy to use. And I, I personally feel like my device is very easy to use. But I do agree, like if you're apprehensive about starting out, like, you know, have someone do it for you that you trust. Like you could even bring this device in and have a dermatologist do it for you and show you the ropes. You know, it's better to be safe than sorry. Rather than just a few months that they have to keep going back for and paying each time. For the non-believers of rollers over pens, okay, that's for another video and I won't get into that debate now. Uh, this will go on forever, but I'll, you know, I'll put it this way. The guy that literally invented needling uses rollers too after all this time instead of pens. And he and I were actually uh, in the midst of possibly doing a study together uh, where we prove a roller can get you the same result. Unfortunately, because of COVID, we couldn't carry on, but the evidence is possible to collate. Now, what about the risks? Well, if you're sensible, they're limited. Uh, the first time you do it, it's gonna be very, very sensitive and you'll probably end up putting less pressure into it, which will mean less than full penetration. That's okay, you can work your way up to full treatment soon enough. That's why I created a stamper device because when I had the derma rollers, people didn't know how hard to press. And again, some people would press so hard, they would scar their skin more. And some people just like didn't press it at all. Whereas this, you just, you know, like when to stop pressing, okay? Because it is a stamper device and just the way it's structured with the conical shape, like it, the force kind of like comes all together evenly. <laughs> you're also gonna be quite sensitive to the sun, so please make sure you wear your sun cream. The needles are prone to getting bacteria on, so. So if you're wearing sunscreen, please wear a mineral-based sunscreen. I only wear mineral-based sunscreens simply because I work out a lot and you know, I put my sunscreen on in the morning, I would go to the gym, and then if I do wear a chemical-based sunscreen, my eyes will like bleed. But I also truly believe, like for me, if you're acne prone, uh, and also I truly just, I like physical sunscreens more. So titanium dioxide, zinc oxide is the way to go, but also just make sure you're wearing like a hat and stuff. So after each use, either stick them in boiling water or spray some isopropyl alcohol onto them to disinfect them before you use it again. Uh, keep the skin clean before you start so you don't... Yeah, so for the banisher, what we have patented is being able to use this as a cleaning device. So you're going to fill this with alcohol to the fill line and you clean it in here and just like shake it. So you can clean it. Also, you want to throw these heads away and, you know, pop on a new one. They come to $20 a head that you can just pop on. So very, very easy to keep clean. And before I needle, I always take an alcohol wipe and I will wipe that section of my face. Remember, I divide my face into sections and I'll needle one at a time. Make sure you run um, an alcohol wipe on top. Now, I don't use alcohol-based toners, but I will use alcohol when it comes to needling. Push you know, harmful things deep into the skin. Um, don't do this if you've got strong pigmentation because you could end up causing the pigment to drop further into the skin and make it even deeper. Uh, don't do it if you have acne because you might end up spreading the acne related bacteria around the face and spread the acne itself potentially. Yep. And that's why I use device and go around the active acne. And the reason why I wanted to create the Banisher product is I waited way too long before doing microneedling to my skin. So older acne scars is much, much harder to treat than like a freshly new formed one. But Everyone told me I had to wait for all the acne scars to heal and for all my acne to go away before doing acne scar treatment. So I think it's so, so important that, you know, once you have that pimple that is healed to just, you don't even have to go around the face, just go around that specific area and just focus on that. And that's it, right? Um, I really wish I did that. I really wish I had this product when I was a teenager because I feel like I could have saved myself. You know, I have hundreds of little acne scars on my face. Um, because I waited too long. And now the acne scars are like, you know, 20, 25 years old. They're not, right? They're not gonna go it. <laughs> Ideally have a consultation.
to check everything's okay first and even better get someone like myself to do it for you the first time in the way that's best for you uh, as an individual and then just copy that at home uh, you know unfortunately um, I've never seen a single clinician in the entire world work this way where they show you how to look after yourself instead of charging you for them to do it every time I'm sure you can guess why too um, I... there's a there's a saying teach a man to fish or fish for a man teach a man to fish teach someone how to microneedle and they will have thick skin forever okay we're just going to call it that that is the end thank you so much dr abs for spreading awareness about uh, microneedling derma rolling again i feel like microneedling in any form whether it's using a derma roller or a stamp or whatever i truly fundamentally believe in it um, personally for me on my face i will only use a stamper device but maybe on my body where i don't have active acne where you know um, i'm not so prone to scarring where my skin is much thicker I will use like a, a derma roller, right? But thank you all so much for watching and let me know if there's any other videos out there you want me to review on the Safi channel. All right, have a great day, bye.